Hello, everybody. Welcome back to this, the final session of Microbit Live 2021. We've got several hours of exciting presentations, sessions, um, insight left for you of this outstanding conference. If you haven't already, I'd love to encourage you to check out the Expo section on the platform. There's a load of interesting stuff going on there as well. And remember, if you've missed any sessions, if you're looking at the schedule and you see something yesterday you're interested in, you can go back and rewatch all of the stuff and, and the sessions will be available after as well. So we've got a really exciting set of things. But before that, I want to just focus a little bit more um, before this afternoon session on the Microbit Foundation's mission, which Gareth talked about yesterday, to inspire every child to create their best digital future. And I think lots has been talked about in uh, over the course of the last two days, how we're doing this. And I want to look a little bit about how authentic problems and setting challenges that students can really engage with can help us achieve this mission. So one of the things that became quite clear early on in the Microbit project was that one of the ways physical computing could be so effective was by allowing students to engage with the things they really cared about and not learn to code or gain digital mastery as the side effect, uh, sorry, as the primary thing that we're gonna do. They're not, they don't sit down, you're gonna learn coding today. What they do is they learn digital mastery as a side effect of doing something they really care about or engaging with a problem that inspires them. And I think that point of technology being the tool and, and the learning coming as a result of the enthusiasm about the problem, it's been a really powerful way that uh, Microbit's been able to be effective. And one of the things we've learned through the work we've done is that if you can set authentic problems to students and make sure they have accessible and effective technology, and actually then throw in a bit of the fact that students, often they don't know what should be impossible. They're not conditioned to think, oh, I can't do that. No, it's too big a problem. Then you can get absolutely incredible solutions by setting up these ideas and really inspiring. And, and I think also we find that where the problems are authentic, we can really broaden the engagement and the, the range of people that want to engage. So one way that we've seen this is by thinking of the global goals as the authentic problems to present. So you say, can, how can Microbit help tackle some of the biggest problems facing humanity? And we've actually not just taken this you know, as a side thing, we've made it a key part of what we do at Microbit with the Do Your Bit Challenge, which if you haven't heard of Do Your Bit, it's a challenge that brings together BBC Microbit and the global goals to challenge children to solve problems with technology. And um, we're running it again next year. And the, we're going to be looking at these uh, item three, also goal three, 10, 13, 14, and 15. So think, do your bit. We ran it um, in 2021. We had thousands of students around the, way, uh, the world enter and 50 countries involved in the, in the challenge. And if you haven't checked out the winners of Do Your Bit uh, for 2021, then you can find them all here. So here are just some of some that we've picked up that I think are absolutely incredible. We've got, this is a project to pull birds' nests out of rising waters. These students looked at de, uh, monitoring forests and kind of deforestation. I love this group. They identified that asthma was um, kind of worse in different temperature time. So they were using the microbit to monitor temperature and giving people warnings about asthma. This project was about physical activity and kind of re reducing access to technology if you haven't done your level of physical activity. And this was about uh, kind of monitoring health and activity as well. So one of the things I think is really interesting for us to think about for the long term is we've already got microbit tackling some of these global goals. And we've got students thinking about how they can invent with the microbit to tackle some of them. We're asking how many more can we tackle? In fact, is it possible if we get the right technology and the right partners involved in this mix, can we have technology like the Microbit students tackling all of the global goals by thinking about what they can do with technology and the Microbit? So that brings us on to this afternoon. So I'm really delighted to be able to introduce Kate Maloney, who is the Executive Director of the Infosys Foundation USA. Um, Infosys are one of the Infosys USA are one of the partners that the the Microbit Foundation has spent 
years really working alongside and in partnership with. And in the last six months, we've been working on a very particular collaboration that you'll be able to find out a lot more about uh, next uh, next week. So Kate is the executive director of Infosys Foundation USA, which is the philanthropic arm of Infosys Limited. I think it, it's going to become clear as you uh, see that there's a huge, uh, see Kate's talk, there's a huge alignment between the goals of the Microbit Educational Foundation and the Infosys Foundation USA. Uh, and so I'm really excited about the things that we're going to be able to do together and the things you're going to talk about. So Kate, thank you very much. Over to you. Thanks, Johnny. Uh, good morning to everyone. It is such a pleasure to be with all of you at this great event. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Kate Maloney, and I have the good fortune of leading the Infosys Foundation USA. Uh, our mission is to increase access to K-12 computer science and maker education for educators and students. And we take a particular focus on those communities that are both under-resourced and underrepresented. We believe that all K-12 students must have the opportunity to create the solutions, technologies, and products that address important challenges to make their communities and the world a better place. So to achieve this, we know we all need to work jointly to help them develop the 21st century skills that will allow them to thrive in what is increasingly a digital economy. So I think we know by all being here today, computer science is essential. But we also must recognize that access to computer science is not universally accessible. So our foundation is working hard to also support that very lane where maker education and computer science intersect. For those of you who be maybe a little bit less familiar, uh, maker education provides multiple pathways for students to engage in more of a hands-on computer science. So this becomes very personally meaningful, we hope culturally relevant, and most importantly, inclusive. So while I acknowledge our foundations working in the US, I know I'm speaking to a global audience and I know that there's the same energy and conviction and recognition that we need to spark the imagination of children all over the world to create social impact in their communities. No surprise, innovation and inclusivity are clearly at the heart of the Microbit Educational Foundation's work. So that's why we love them as a partner and they've been one, as Johnny mentioned, for a number of years. Um, one of our, if I can make a small plug, one of our signature programs is something called the Pathfinders Institute. And some of you tuned in this morning may have joined us um, and some of you, I hope in the future do come. This has been an in-person training or professional development for K-12 educators. And really, I just mention it because it speaks to our commitment to invest in all of you, the digital teachers of the future. Microbit's been right alongside us since the beginning at those in-person trainings and also very recently, have spent um, a very diligent six months or so developing content for our online version, the Pathfinders Online Institute, by the same name. Uh, this platform exists now, free to everyone, and has a number of live and asynchronous opportunities for educators to work on their own professional development, but also engage with your students in exciting ways. In the US next week is Computer Science Education Week, hashtag CS is everywhere. And we have a very exciting announcement and launch that will take place on Monday. So I don't wanna to give too many hints, but I do encourage you to follow the foundation and of course Microbit uh, on social media to take advantage of that exciting opportunity. In addition to our Pathfinders Institute, which is all about educating and professional development for you, the educators, we also have something called the InfiMaker Awards. Uh, and my remarks are not just to plug what it is that we're doing as a foundation, but more to speak about the important programs that we need to support for youth around the world. The InfiMaker Awards uh, are recognizing that some of the magic of computer science and making takes place in the classroom, but also in museums and libraries and after school programs where we're really working to enable and unlock that agency and creativity of our youth to tackle really big problems, even at a local level 
with technology-enabled solutions. In 2021, it wouldn't surprise you all to hear that we focused the awards on innovations that brought maker ed remotely or at home. And I'm excited to share that one of our awardees this past year was an, a, a makerspace called Gizmo CDA. This is in Idaho. And the reason I'm mentioning them is because they put the micro bit to use. So I wanna take a minute and show their application video with you. I think you'll see firsthand more than my own words, those of an 11 year old named Molly. Um, and before we press play, I just wanna preface there is a slightly unique voice at the beginning of the video. Please keep an open mind. This was the creative application that Gizmo put forward. But I think at the end, you'll see how important it is to bring computer science to life and how our youth are ready to take and run with these concepts. Over to our video. As one of the founders of Gizmo, it was my job to sit with kids who just needed a little space. I was the cleaning crew for the late night dinners of the robotics team. I did everything. There have been changes, but never like the ones caused by COVID. Now I deliver Gizmo to go kits for kids at home because it's not safe for them to come in. When we talked about a year long remote coding class, I volunteered to teach. Sadly, even with drag and drop, my paws were too big for the keyboard. Rough. Molly was one of our gizmologists, and she offered to be the video mentor. And you know what? She does a better job. Hi, my name is Molly. Today, we're going to be talking about Microbit. This is the first video, so I'm just going to go over a couple basic things. So we'll start with the parts of the Microbit. Let's start with the front. As you can see, this little block right here, those are all the LEDs. Um, over here, right here, and right here. These are the buttons that you can program to do things like when you push this button, it'll show a picture on the LEDs. And then they get a PDF that's filled with information. Do you know what? I think I'll do the class with them. Thank you all for taking a minute to observe Molly. I think you can see why <laughs> Molly and Gizmo CDA was one of our 2021 winners. Uh, she is clearly impressive. I think perhaps even to the Microbit Foundation, you may even have a future or current ambassador. Um, but my real message in sharing that is that I really hope all of you feel even more convicted about the need to start teaching computer science young. It is never too early. Now, if you'd like, uh, allow me please to conclude with uh, an encouraging invitation. And this is building upon uh, Johnny's great remarks at the beginning of this session. And that was to consider amazing ways we can use computer science and maker education concepts to help kids create solutions to big challenges. Since I'm speaking to a global audience, which I love, this is a wonderful chance to remind us again that we are officially in the decade of action. That means the clock is ticking toward the deadline that's been set for the achievement of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. As Microbit and Johnny were mentioning, there are a number of them that they have selected, but all of you know there are 17 goals to choose from. 2030 is the year that all of us around the world will be held to account for achieving milestones in education, in health, and as we all know very well, having just witnessed COP26, climate, climate being a very passionate subject for our youth. So I want to encourage all educators who are watching to really dig into this do your bit challenge. I have yet to have a chance to use it with the foundation or our partners, but um, the Microbit Foundation colleagues I work closely with know how much I love this. Um, as a personal note, before leading the foundation, I was completely immersed in all things SDGs. So I am particularly passionate about the power to use and unlock the creativity of our youth to help us get there. So all educators, the resources are there for you to introduce this framework to help you bring these concepts to life and get your students engaged. 
So speaking of big questions and local solutions, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see Molly in a very official role someday soon. But I know those of you who are joining us from multiple countries, you know Molly's, you know the likes of children who have the same aspirations if only they are exposed to these concepts. So the time is now. There is no need to wait to bring this exposure to our youth. I want to thank you for listening today and a special thank you to the Microbit Educational Foundation for inviting me to be with all of you. Uh, I'm going to steal some of their very own words that I love. Let's get coding and let's change the world together. Thank you.